<laughs> All right, welcome everybody. I'm gonna go through and kind of catch up on chat. Uh, we got Katie Collins. We got Nick Sogo. Uh, we've got 351 Cleveland in the house. Uh, Dave Gashar, uh, Abbott. Hey, Abbott, how's it going? Uh, Georgia Fisherman, uh, LG Bass. Uh, let's see, Mike Sampson, Matt, want to be outdoors? I love those names. We'll kind of give, yeah, we'll give it a little bit for, uh, everyone to get in and uh guys if y'all don't mind share this out while we're getting started there's johnny with jns outdoors he's another oklahoman he's up in the northeast corner and i'm down here in the very south central but at mm. least i got somebody in oklahoma <coughs> for a while i kind of felt like the lone duck on the water there was mm. nobody around me really? doing yeah. Uh, What's the river in Oklahoma? Uh, there's several of them uh, that branch off of the Red River. The Red River is the main river, but you can't really, unless you have land on that river, it's hard to access it. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of the time you're fishing uh, creeks, uh, lakes, uh, reservoirs, stuff like that uh, around here. Now, if you can find a spot on the Red River to get in, uh, fishing with the dot, welcome. Uh, you can kind of float down the river because there's a lot of sandbars. So you have holes. It doesn't hold water like the Potomac does. Kinda. You'll have sandbars and you'll have holes. and uh, They use airboats uh, mm. to travel it because that airboat, they can, just, they can just hop over the shallow water, run it on the grass or whatever. Right. Even uh, even the game wardens and stuff use those airboats to navigate it. Right. Uh, you, can take, you can take four wheelers and stuff down there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, when the river's up, uh, a lot of the big catfish move in there, and uh, you can catch some tanks. Uh, it's not uncommon to go down there and catch 70 and 80 pound fish, and uh, you have That's a lot amazing. in the 40 50 class. So, <clears throat> Hill Jack catfishing made it in. What's up, Brent Hill Jack? Fins and Fowl. Yep. Brent with Fins and Fowl made it in. Two old vets. Hey, welcome. My Got wife's some good dogs people are in here today. Yeah. Chris Uselton. Chris, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah. Uh, Everyone, uh, there's Justin's fishing fetish. Uh, we want to give a big welcome to Bex and Steven. Uh, no real loss. Uh, they fish the Potomac a lot. And uh, they're up around D.C. and that area. Uh, same waters that Chunky and uh, has and uh, DMV, uh, TBA, uh, the Baltimore Angler. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of. There's a lot of fishing up there, and uh, that Potomac River, I have really been impressed with it. I don't think it has peaked yet. I think it is on its way up, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a phenomenal fishery. Uh, if they do not mess with it and quit trying to kill them blue cats and stuff out of there, <laughs> it is going to be a great fishery. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to get uh, better and better right now. You know they are yeah. they doing all the sewing sewer or yeah sewer system. Yep. Hopefully, you know we'll be able to even swim in there in twenty years from One now. day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people yeah. are swimming already, but I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Your boy Troy catfishing made it in. Hey Troy. Your boy Troy. Uh, and fell. Surfing's catfishing. Uh. I never realized how much pollution we had in our rivers till mm -hmm. I got to watch the people on YouTube and talking about it. And uh, I had no idea. Uh, Justin's fishing fetish. Welcome. Uh, yeah, it's pretty so bad I, actually. 
Yeah, and you know, in y'all's area, you knew about it. Uh, Fish Snatcher, welcome. But until I got on YouTube and I got to listen to the people talk, uh, we had no idea down here. It's not something that they go ahead and publicize and put out there. No, so no. most of the country does not know. Uh, yes. John Larson, yesterday I got a 135-pound blue, uh, bluefin tuna. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's on my bucket list. That, that's a fight right there. Woo. How long did it take to bring it back? See what they say. Wow. Chris, I have not got to watch that video you made for Has Life yet. Uh, I will definitely check it out. Uh, Troy. There are so many. <laughs> yeah, there are so many channels that I have and I'm subscribed to and I try and go around and watch everybody. I have not watched TV since probably February or March. It is all YouTube all day oh, long. Uh, I know, yeah. Yeah. It, it, if so I'm not too. fishing, I'm watching fishing and uh, trying to learn. Uh, fishing with the Chad made it in. Polar Bear, welcome, guys. Uh, kind of give us a history of how you and Stefan uh, come together and got started. Yeah. Um, I'll go first, and then, Stefan, do you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, I'll jump in. Um, so uh, I actually used to work with Stevan's wife. Um, she moved on to a different company, um, but Stevan and I knew each other through that. So we've been Facebook friends for a while. Um, and it was just like, I kind of noticed on Facebook that he was posting a lot of fish pictures and like he was commenting on my fish pictures. And I don't even know how it, it started with, with the posting to YouTube, but I think I think we were just enjoying it so much and learning so much from YouTube, right? Like yeah. we were watching other people yeah. do stuff. And we just wanted to to share that. And it took us a while to even catch fish together. That's a, There's actually a video the first time we actually both caught a fish at the same time. in the same video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when we started, we were bass fishing. Yeah. You know, I think I started when I, even I, uh, when the pandemic started, I went fishing and I had a bobber and a hook, you know, and uh, and then I was like, I don't know. I went on YouTube and I saw these guys. I think I saw, um, what's his name? Um, One Rod, One yeah. Rod Fishing, yeah. using a Senko and a Texas rig. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? And I bought it and then I tried it. And it worked. So it was magical. I was like, "Oh my god, this is the new way to to fish." Yeah. Um, in, when I was young, in back in France, we just had the bobber and you know our hook and yeah. and uh, and a worm, and that's it. Um, and so I think I don't know if I asked you, Bex. You know, what are you using or what do you know about the right, the right, and the Texas rig, and then. I think uh, from there we we started to connect a little more and see that we were kind of like passionate about it. Yeah, and I think we both love see, figuring out new types of fishing too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember the day that we were both we we're we we're trying to catch catch catfish somewhere, had no idea what we we're doing, and then we're like, let's go here, and like we sat there for like ten hours, <laughs> with like no not ten hours, but a long time of like no yeah. fish. Yeah, I, uh, I was just looking at our history of uh, videos, and our first catfish was six months ago. Yeah, already. Yeah, it's addicting. Yes. And I think we were using a, you know, those hooks for the. For it's like the, a Texas rig. Well, for a Texas rig hook, not even a circle hook, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we had, and then we did more research, and uh, here we are. No, we're pros. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah. But now we understand a lot better. Yeah. Kevin from Palmetto Cat made it in. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. But 
y'all have really come a long way. Uh, you talk about being pros or not, but you're out there, you're on the fish, regardless of size, you're catching fish. Right. And from a viewer aspect, uh, it's it's so pleasurable to watch. Uh, you know, it's, Steven, you with the dancing and stuff, you bring such an energy to the show and stuff. It It's so entertaining. And, you know, it's not like we're watching you f catch fish. And at that point, I don't think we even really care if you catch a fish. It's about being together yeah. And you feel like you're just a group of friends on the water fishing. Right. You feel like you're there, you're part of the family. And that's very, very unique and very, very special. And uh, right. it, it's, it's, it does wonders. I, I really enjoy watching y'all. Uh, I see Ernie Brown made it in. Hey, I, I have to tell uh, you that I'm every time I go fishing, I'm so happy. It's like... I'm out and, you know, with Bex and we have everything, we are yeah. set up, we're going to catch fish. I don't know. I'm just so happy. Evan, we giggle a lot. We giggle. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but it, it shows. It shows to the viewers that awesome. you have that passion. You're out there enjoying it. A lot of people have turned it into kind of a career, the YouTube deal. And if they're not catching big fish, they're not satisfied. Uh, they're not having a good day or, you know, they're just not enjoying it. And to me, when I watch y'all, it's like watching someone catch their first fish. Mm -hmm. That same right. passion, that same excitement is there. That's and awesome. It, from a, yeah, from a viewer aspect, uh, it, it's awesome to watch. Hey, I'm Miss really D, get hooked on deep fish and made it in. It's really good to know because sometimes I feel bad when we catch like three fish in like four hours. I'm like, oh my God. What just happened? <laughs> but we're still having a good fishing. time, you know, but you know. That's what matters. You don't you don't have to have the fish to enjoy yourselves and have a good time yeah. and be entertaining. You know, uh it's not always about how much fish you catch. It's about the time you get to spend together. Right. You know? yeah, I think You're, I think one of my favorite it, live streams we did was, uh, I mean, we tried out a new spot and we didn't catch anything. And my wife, Fani, was there. She sometimes comes on as like special guest and sometimes you'll see Adva, who's Stevan's wife. And um, like we just were, we just threw in a piece of pizza crust. Like she ordered like a hundred dollars worth of pizza. We ate pizza. We threw in the pizza crust, and we got the most janky-looking channel cat came out of the water. And I, it was just so much fun, you know, even though we didn't catch any other fish that night. You yeah. make fun of stuff like that, but what that reminded me of, I've always taken my mother fishing. Mm. And uh, my mother is one. I've seen her put gummy worms on the hook. I've seen her put Cheetos, oh, yeah. bubble gum, hot dogs. It does not matter. If it could be thrown in that water, she's going to try it. And I watched her catch. Uh, we were in Sardis Lake, and uh, she caught an eight-pound channel cat on wow. a freaking Cheeto. <laughs> on a Cheeto. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, uh, delicious. <laughs> I was like, wow. And uh, my mother's a, a blast to uh, fish with, and uh, uh, catfish is all she'll fish for. And uh, she's a blast. Uh she took all of her rods one time and she called me on the phone and uh, she's like, I painted all my rods with this incandescent paint. And I thought a minute, I said, incandescent paint? What do you mean? I said, what are you talking about? She's like, you know, she said, the kind that glows in the dark. I said, you mean fluorescent paint? She's like saying <laughs> And she did. She went and got her some fluorescent paint and painted all the tips of her rods. And so that's awesome. Uh, that's like another thing I love about fishing, though, and at least it's just been my experience is that like it brings so many different people together of different backgrounds. It brings families together. It brings people you would usually like not hang out with, right? Together. Um, and I love that. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing. I, you know, I'll be walking around, see someone else catch a fish, and I'm like. 
what is it? Do you need help? Can I get the net? You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I see you fishing with the squirrel made it in. Hey, squirrel. Uh, <laughs> from my aspect, I know y'all probably run into this too, but I meet people at the gas station or the lake or the grocery store, and we'll get to talking, and we'll get to talking about fishing. And uh, I tell them about the YouTube community and the catfish channels and stuff. And they're like, wow, really? And yeah. uh, I was talking to one of our local police officers. I was getting gas and he was getting ready to head to Corpus Christi, Texas for vacation. And uh, we got to talking and he was wanting to go fishing down there. And he's like, I don't know much about that inshore fishing. I'm like, you do know they have good catfishing and stuff down there. Yeah. He's like, really? I was like, yes, they have a, there's a place called White Cat Cove. I said, look it up. I said, don't go down there and not take any of your rods. And just simple things like that and people you meet out at the lake, you, you build friendships and you meet new people. Yeah. I, see. I will say I just saw a comment pop up from uh, John Larson that was about, you know, uh, everyone is equal when they fish. Gear does help. So money is a factor. Um, I think that's so important. Like one of the other things I've noticed about the fishing community is that everybody gives back in some way. Right. Like you see it with the super chats yeah. happening for live streams. You see it in the brands that like give out rods to people. And one thing that I was um, I was fishing uh, maybe about two weeks ago. I got to, uh, there was a young girl and her p two parents were there. Um, she was autistic and, and learning how to fish. And I got to teach her how to fish. And I had an old rod in my car that like I didn't use anymore. I didn't need. And I was able to pass that on. And like, that's because of the energy of this. Like, that's what we do, right? Like we, we pass yeah. it on. We, I'm as excited about someone else catching their first fish as I am about me yeah. catching the PB. You know? And that little girl that you gave that rod to, whether you realize it or not, you changed that child's life. At least and for a little you bit, have right? probably, Yeah, you've set her on a path and started that journey for her. Uh, I see Robert Andrews made it in. Papa T, welcome, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. I was watching a stream about a month ago, and it was Snake River Catfish Slayer. Mm -hmm. And he was out catching bait at this little pond with the fountain in it uh, to get ready to go catfishing. And a young boy and his grandma showed up and they had got him a fishing rod and did not know how to rig it. And they walked up to Snake and uh, they asked him, could you help? And he showed them how to rig that little boy's rod. He rigged it all up for him and everything. And uh, they didn't have any bait. And he let that little boy use some of his worms and it was so fun and exciting to watch because this little boy had never caught a fish before. And he's out there fishing in this pond and he's catching these bluegills and these brim. Awesome. And you could hear him. He was so excited and he'd get one on and he'd yell, fish on. And I mean, he went to reeling. And it was such a blessing, not just for that child, but for me watching to see that and that excitement and stuff it brings you back to those memories of when you first started. It, it kind of gives you your back. And it, it's great to see that in the catfish community and the way everyone helps each other. And it's very supportive. Yeah. Uh, you do not find a lot of groups that support each other the way that the catfish community does. 100%. And it, it, it's a great community. And I try and introduce as many people as it to it as I can so they get to share in this experience because you know like you were saying when y'all first started out you were transitioning from bass fishing to cat fishing right. you learned a lot by watching YouTube yep well now you take the knowledge that you learn and you're passing it on to the people who are watching you on YouTube yeah. so <laughs> it's forward, a right? That's awesome. yeah it it it's great to see it come around and you know uh up there where y'all fish there's a lot of people in those parks and stuff and when y'all are catching a fish or something you'll see people come off the track and stuff that's walking or yeah. uh from one of the parks and they're like you got one and i mean yeah. they want to see what you got and, you know how big is it and, that there's you know, anything like that in the water 
Yeah, they can't believe there's that's such deep fish in the water. They're like, what is this? That's what most of them say. If you watch the lives when these people come up, they're like, man, I didn't even know we had fish like that here. Yeah. They have lived there, and some of them have lived there 20 plus years. Yes. And yeah. never knew those fish were there. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, until YouTube come out and we started seeing all these guys, hey, Mike Turner, welcome. And hey, YouTube Mike. come out. I had no idea there was that many fish in there. And uh, quality fish and uh, Richard Montano, man, he kills the carp and stuff up there and uh, catches the catfish and the snakeheads, TBA and yeah. them. Man, that, that them snakeheads and stuff are nothing we ever see. So I learned from watching. And uh, same thing with our UK channels. We've got a lot yeah. of guys from the UK. I watch them because when they catch a fish, that's my first time ever seeing that species of fish. Right. And uh, even though they're fishing different waters and stuff, you can watch their rigs and stuff and how they tie them. And you can bring that back and maybe use it in your area. 100%. Hey, Ryan Bortz. Ryan Bortz, blue collar catfishing made it in. If y'all have not checked him. What's up, everybody? Ryan Bortz is a blast to watch because uh, he goes out there in that kayak. And uh, you imagine what them 20, 30, and 40 pounders do from the bank. Kayak. Could you imagine being out there in that kayak and that thing pulling Stevens, you across that water? Wow. Stephen says he just wants to see if one can pull him around. <laughs> He's they like, will. I'm going to catch a big kayak and see if it will pull the kayak around. 30 pounders can't yep. for sure. <laughs> uh, Bald Eagle, welcome. Uh, hey, Bald Eagle. Yeah. Uh, Circle Hook Productions, Clint, if y'all ever watched him in his kayak, he'll get in them and you'll watch them pull him around. And I am not coordinated enough to be in a <laughs> kayak. Uh, I'm a big old boy and I need r room to move. Like, I'm kind of like that proverbial elephant in a china cabinet. Uh, <laughs> but watching watching the kayakers and watching them fish is still enjoyable to me even though i know i'm not going to do that i'll be in the tank i'll be swimming yeah uh, but it's still fun to watch yeah and you can take little bits here and there you know yeah well and they're still doing the same thing you are uh whether you're bank fishing or whether you're boat fishing uh you're still looking for structure you're still looking for things that hold the fish there right uh, what's the first thing you do before you go out and go fishing you plan and you're like well i think the fish are going to be here this is why and you know you just have to make those decisions and sometimes we're heroes and sometimes we're zeros but that's all <laughs> part of fishing yeah you know so I hear a lot of guys like screenshots and stuff of like depth and talking uh, about that. I was wondering, uh, is there like a better chance to get uh, to catch fish regarding the, the the pressure, the you know from the barometer or yeah, the barometric pressure. Yeah, what is the? Is it better when it's high or low? What's the? It's it's better when it comes falling. If it goes real high, uh, that heavy pressure, uh, it puts pressure on their swim bladder. Well, it makes them fish feel like they're full. So mm -hmm. they're not aggressive. They're not feeding. But if you can, the best bite is if the barometric pressure has been up and it starts to fall. If you can catch it as it's coming down, yeah. as that pressure falling and it relieves them uh, that pressure off their swim bladder and stuff, it triggers that in that fish and they're like, hey, we need to eat. Right. So you can get on a hot bite and if you've noticed when you've been fishing there's times you'll get on a bite and every single rod you got will be having fish on it and it may last 10 to 15 minutes and you cannot keep rods in the water and then it slows down. Mm -hmm. That's when that switch changed uh -huh. and when they start feeding you'll hit it and as it continues falling you'll still catch them fish coming through uh, especially if you're fishing a travel corridor because they're going to come up in there looking for that food but a 
a falling barometric pressure is always better for me. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank it's you. Because it took us a while to figure out tides. That was a whole new thing for Stevan and I was figuring out like high tide, low tide, um, how fish relate to different structure during tides. You know, that was a whole yeah. new world for us too. But I think we're getting that it. is a good point. That's a good point because a lot of the waters that we fish, our rivers are not tidal. Yeah. Uh, our creeks are not tidal. Right. Our lakes are not tidal. So for y'all with that tidal river, you face challenges we do not. Right. Um, you know, high tide versus low tide. What have you learned? What have y'all noticed uh, as far as the fish, uh, where they locate, uh, how active or do they bite? You know, because the tide does affect stuff like that. Yeah. I'll let, do you want to go first, Devin? Go ahead. I think I'm for me, it's story. like, um, so I look at it as kind of like tributaries and um, like high points. I don't know if that makes sense or if this is proper terminology, right? But we have like this area where the tide kind of, kind of ends at a dam, right? And so like, for me, what I've noticed is that um, it's not necessarily so much high tide or low tide, but is there water there and is it switching? Does that make sense? So like, is it yeah. switching from high tide to low tide or is it switching from low tide to high tide? Um, so if there's water there, like some places you're, there's only water there if it's high tide, even still that last hour or first hour before it starts switching to low tide, I've noticed yeah. is when I get the most bite. So I like to try and have at least whenever we're going live, I like to ha have at least one transition in the tide happening. And then we pick the location based on if there's going to be water there, if that makes yeah. sense. I don't know if it's right, but when I feel like when, when the tide goes up, the fish follow the tide, you know, yeah. to that point yeah. and then probably feed and then, some of them stay, but then when the low tide go back, you know, they go back the other way and follow that, yeah. that whatever yeah. path they, they follow. They fall in the bait. And maybe go back to their, to yeah. their hideout, you know? Yeah, they'll follow the current to where they can follow the bait fish. Right. Mm -hmm. See, Randall made it in. Hey, Randall. Uh, Judy Booty made it in. Hey, Judy. Booty. Uh, you know, that me i'm lazy so i see the high tide uh you can fish places but there's places at low tide on that potomac man it is a workout it is mud i mean that water recedes yeah. i could not believe how much it drops uh high tide it'll be over the fences yeah. and then low tide it's way down and you may have to walk 30 yards out on that muddy bank, sunk up to your knees. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, man, uh, I've watched DMV and Haz and uh, Mark Fishing Magician and them fish that low tide. And I'm like, man, yes. y'all guys are getting a workout. You're killing yeah. yourselves. And some but of those places, they aren't necessarily like, they're not necessarily like super hidden, but like they require yeah. a lot of effort for you to decide to fish them, you know? Yeah, uh, and them guys that fish that mud and that low tide and stuff, man, that's dedication. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of work. Especially and, uh, in the winter. <laughs> but yeah, especially in the winter. <laughs> yeah, and I've had people, you know, you ask them about the tide, you'll have some people that prefer it when the tide's coming in. You'll have some people prefer it when the tide's coming out. And you'll have some people who like to fish right on the bubble. Right. Uh, they like a couple of hours after high tide mm -hmm. and a couple of hours after low tide. They'll fish that middle bubble there. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all depends on what works for you, what area you're at. Wow. Uh, you know, as well as I do, there's times on that Potomac River, you could be sitting there and you're not catching nothing. And some clown is a mile up river or down river for yeah. you, and they're tearing them up, and you're live, and you're over there twiddling your thumbs, and you have people coming in the chat. Man, he's done caught fifteen over there, and you're like, "What is he doing?" Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's the thing though, because like you can you can do all the preparation in the world, and that's like my thing is like if you have time to fish, just get out and fish, right? Like if that's the time you can go out and fish, just go out and fish, because you could like prep and be exactly. strategic about all the best things and get nothing, yeah, right? And go out when you least expect it. I've gone out and my first striper, like I got my first rockfish, was a yep. miserable day. I was like, I'm not going to catch any fish. And the only fish I caught that day was like a 23 inch striper. And it was amazing. I was not even going for, I was going for bass. It was, just, it was, you know, just get out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Some of the days I go, I'm like, man, there ain't no way I'm going to catch anything. And before I can get the live stream going, the rods start going down. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that just made me a liar. I mean, you just never know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to kind of put each of y'all on the spot for a minute. All right, Stephen, Stephen I know you're going to, I know you're going to leave early, so I want to get you. Yeah, I'm here in time to get un uncomfortable on that chair, but uh, I'm, okay. I'm listening. <laughs> what you got for me? And, and inquiring minds want to know about this secret chicken recipe. Oh, yes, I can. I can share some of it. So what I'm doing, Some of it. <laughs> because I change it, I'm still trying to put new things and, um, but the original, uh, the original is basically um, the chicken, some jello, strawberry jello, uh, chicken breast, and I put uh, some real garlic cloves in it. So I, you know, I just leave the big clue and put at least, I don't know, like seven or ten of them in there. And I put some um, of that chicken uh, bouillon. You know what I mean? The like the core, like yeah. the cube, but I have the one yeah. of the powder. So I put a good yeah. two spoons of that. And finally, I pour some... Um, or some cornmeal uh, powder you. thing in it, so that, and then I mix all of that. And uh, my theory that that cornmeal with all that jello and the juice of the chicken, once it hits the water, kind of leaves a trail in the water. And I'm hoping, yeah. that, uh, you know, but uh, I've used the jello catfish restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he's like, I like serving the whole or... entree out there. <laughs> yes. He's got uh, the whole entree out there. Them catfish can't resist it, you know. They're yeah. not used to it. I never thought about the garlic cloves. Now, I've done it, and uh, I've used minced garlic mm -hmm. and, to where it's got the chunk and also the garlic juice and let it set in there. But I never thought about just putting the whole cloves in there. Yeah. Uh, I also learned that um, catfish like... Uh, anise, the flavor anise. Yeah, I did buy yeah. some of those anise uh, stars, and I put some last time in my also in my chicken. See, sometimes I just change something. I just add something to see. And uh, I mean, right now the fish are not biting too much. I feel like, but um, I think, I mean, I've had a few bites, and I'm gonna try it again, and um, I'll let you know if well, it's. Y'all are probably still about middle ways of the spawn up there, aren't you? Yeah, Is because quite I a just bit? saw the, the video from Has Life and uh, all the fish he caught, they were all messed up. So yep. Uh, yep. they're still spawning. Yep. See, and ours are, we're at the tail end. Ours are starting to come off. But that anise for that chicken, I have had a lot of people talk about that and putting it in there. And uh, uh, they say it works better than the garlic and everything else. But uh, I'm going to try the chicken again. I tried it last year. I never had a bite on it. But I was also fishing with it in the winter. And they mm -hmm. were like, you need to try it in the warmer water, in the warmer temperatures. And uh, so I'm going to try it again. And uh, don't give up on it. I'm going to try it. I know I've seen fish caught on it. I know there's times it works. But yeah. I just want to test it. I just want to test it for myself. Like carp, I had never thought of using carp for bait. 
until mm -hmm. I started watching Has Life and them and the other anglers up there in DC. And they will hit the carp down here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it not only catches fish where you're at, it'll catch fish down here. Yeah. It's, it's probably whatever fish are in your water, um, you know, they'll feed on it. They're probably. Yeah. I want yep. to try snakehead as bait, but I've also heard that snakehead is delicious. And so I'm like, do I eat it or do I give it to the fish? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard, but that is a weird looking fish. It is. Them snakeheads are some wild looking critters. Uh, hey, Wayne, nice to see you. Uh, and then also, I, I'm not against trying anything, but, <laughs> you know, that's like down here in our state, it's legal to use crappie for bait, but crappie is really good eating. And if I catch a big crappie to where I'm going to keep it, I'm not feeding it to the fish. I'm going to feed it to my belly. Yeah. You know, I, I like to eat fish. And I'm always surprised because, uh, I mean, when you go to the store, there's all these sea fish that you can buy. And I feel like I should try all of them at least once to see if one of them might be good. <laughs> but nobody's doing it, so I don't know if I should do it, if it's going to be a, a waste of money, or I don't know. I'll try well, it. Well, and the different, fish they, the different fish they sell in the store, like down here a lot of times, if you go to the grocery store, and you try and buy catfish, what they're selling you is not actually catfish. It's cod or sea bass. So, you know, you kind of have to know what you're getting into. Uh, to me, I like fresh fish because I know exactly where that fish come from. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the pollutants and stuff down here. Uh, yeah. Our waters are clean. So you can eat fish out of almost every single body of water. And, uh, I don't keep anything big. I don't keep anything over 10 pounds. Uh, anything 10 pounds and up goes. Uh, I don't stock my freezer. Uh, when I'm ready for fresh fish, we go out and we either catch fish and eat fish or we don't catch fish and we're still craving fish and we keep going till we catch some That's to eat. Good. That's uh, good. Yeah, I told myself. You know, I know a lot of people. To eat. I just want to try to catch it myself or I'll eat it if someone else invite me and have fish, but I'm trying to not fish to, to buy it anymore because I, I know what those big uh, fishing industries are doing and I don't like it. Yeah. So I'll go from to the small yeah. fishermen. I'll, I'll buy it from them. See, Laura, the explorer made it in. Brian B. Catfishing. Hey, Brian. Uh, Mr. Brian B. It's so cool that I'm you know, know we, we we recognize some names like that, you know, from <laughs> all the yeah. Cats I, and it's, it's I really knew you'd crazy. recognize. I knew you'd recognize Brian B. Hey, David Hamilton, Jason Lamb, Parker's Pursuits. Hey, Parker. Hey. Uh, hey. Just before we went up, Jerry was out there. Jerry Parker was out fishing in between the storms, uh, trying to get some. And, and I, I think that Chunky it. went live a little bit ago. Um, so after yeah, that, Chunky, he's still Chunky's live. He's, be live. he's uh, using Uncle Lou's new rods. Mm, yeah. Yeah, he did. He yeah. had a live today in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that light medium, that medium light rod that he yeah. had, he really excited about the wiggle at that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's going to be. When you watch them. Chunky. This one's going to touch the, the finger for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, Chunky's a perfect example. He does not go out there and have to catch thirty pound fish to be happy. Right. He'll go out there with the medium rods, and he can catch five to eight pound fish and have a ball. And uh, Chunky's very entertaining to watch. Yeah. Uh, his laugh, his laugh is magical, <laughs> and he has fun doing what he does. And uh, he may donkey kick the chair. He may knock stuff over. He gets excited. But he is a, a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Hey, bottom feeder hooked up. Welcome. Uh, I mean, that's the thing that it I... It was fun watching. Yeah, that's what I want to keep in mind, right? Like, I don't ever want... Obviously, I want 
new PBs. I want to catch bigger fish and all that stuff. But I like the adventure is the experience, right? And I always yeah. just want, and that's kind of like why we have the share the joy of fishing. We always want to keep it like we, I, I consider us multi-species though. Mostly right now you'll see like bass and catfish, but um, I just love getting out there. I love, I love bringing people with me. I love fishing with Steven. Um, I love yeah. trying new things and just having fun with it. Well, and that's a good point you make too, Bex. It's, it's always more fun if you have someone fishing with you because when you catch a fish or you do catch a big one, uh, you've got someone to share that moment with. Yep. You know, life is, life is not really a spectator sport. Yep. It's a lot more enjoyable if you have friends and family and people to share that with. And, you know, you're making memories, you know, even yeah. if it's something silly, you set the hook and you're reeling in a fish, your line breaks and you fall down. Guess what? They're <laughs> going to remember that from now yeah. on. And, right. uh, you know, 10 years later, Steven will be like, you remember when you fell over the rail and, you know, I remember when uh, I fall over it makes all the time break. because I fall over all the time. Steven is constantly picking me up. <laughs> I have nightmares about it. <laughs> He's like, got this time, Bex. Yeah. Um, if you want to see like just joy of um, like figuring it out that our, our first catfish video that we posted, I guess it was about six months ago. Yeah, We've been so trying cool. for a while, trying to figure it out, learning from YouTube and Steven yeah. got on a three pound catfish. Like we had this wall that we were trying to get it over. I managed oh, to yeah. get it in the net for him. Right. Like, we, like that is yeah. pure joy. Yeah. We were so <laughs> Cause for us, it that was, was the first catfish live though. Yeah. For that, us, it was big. That was the first catfish on live. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And I think, Seven, you'd call and it I mean, the y'all worked there. before that. But, you know. Yeah. This whole Potomac. Y'all worked at it, though. Yeah. Y'all worked at it to catch that fish. It's not like you went out there and just throwed out and was immediately successful. Yeah. I mean, you had to work at it. So when that fish finally did bite and you finally did get that fish on live and you got it all the way to the bank and got it landed and stuff, man, that sense of accomplishment, yeah. uh, it, it's overwhelming and uh, it, it, it's it's awesome. Uh, yeah. I don't ever want y'all to lose that. Yeah. If, okay, if you Beth. lose it, stop watching us. <laughs> yes. I've got to ask you this question or people are going to, send me bad text messages and stuff. I asked Steven about the chicken. Everyone wants to know about your pork sausage glizzies. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> was the glizzy masters. Uh, yeah. You killed it with the glizzy masters. And then recently the iron cat, uh, you have been on fire. Uh, Sergeant glizzy. Uh, so <laughs> everyone, like shades. everyone is wanting to know about these glizzies. Yeah, and because uh, me, personally, I've tried using hot dogs and stuff. You know, yeah. I cannot keep them things on the hook. Yeah. So uh, I've so, talked to some people, and they say like salt, but I want to talk to you and see what your secret is. Yeah. So I think. Um, so I've, we, I think the first thing we were ever trying when we were trying to get catfish was like Slim Jim. Like that's the first thing. And we got some hits, but we could never land anything though. Brian B. Catfishing has a great story about catching, I think a 70 pounder on Slim Jim. So yeah, um, I don't think it was ever recorded, but so basically th this is where the community comes in. Right. So um, Richard Montano had been out there with has one day live streaming and he just had some pork that he threw on a line. Um, and he was catching the catfish. So that was like the first thing where I was like, you know, we, there's a lot of hot dogs that there's beef hot dogs and stuff like that. But what about breakfast sausage? Right? Like, can we try that? And that's mm -hmm. mostly pork. Um, and then I figured that that raw in my experience is always better than the cooked stuff. Um, just in my, cause it's more yeah. oily, all that kind of stuff. And at first we went out and we were catching them on them, but it was, um, as you said, it falls off, it comes off. You would you would pull it back in and you just have the skin of a sausage that once existed, yeah. you know? Um, and I yeah. think 
uh, Will, uh, a couple of people. There's Ovilla who watches our lives a lot, and Will O who tunes into our lives a lot, and they mentioned the salt stuff. Um, so I basically just got a bunch of these frozen raw hot dogs um, that were the pork sausage. Any breakfast sausage so far has worked for me. Um, I chop them in half. I smother them with salt and garlic, and then I let them sit for about two days in the fridge, and that really toughens them up, and it works. It's really simple, but um, I think when the cat no is finicky, something different. No works. garlic. A little garlic. A little garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Some people put the yeah, garlic powder. Some people put the you know regular garlic. <laughs> I do garlic yeah. powder. Okay. I see Max Fish made it in and Christopher Comer. Welcome, guys. Uh, I heard them talk about the salt and stuff because that's one of the deals. I didn't even try the Glizzy Masters because yeah. I'm like, man, I cannot keep a hot dog to stay on the hook to save my life. Right. Yeah. And uh, I've seen people. I've seen people use them down here, and uh, the Channel Cats down here. Yeah. Uh, they will really like the hot dogs. And it doesn't have to be anything special. They're taking the, you know, 79 cent package of hot dogs and they're yeah. just going out there and catching these channel cat and stuff on them. So, I, you know, I will say that, like the way that, so once you've got that sausage hard, um, if you kind of like, you know, when you sock a worm on a hook, so you like, you, like you kind of actually yeah. like perch the, so if you do that with the hot dog, I'm pretty sure, and I have no evidence of this, but I feel like that is increasing the hookup ratio for me. So, well, and that that's little things that you learn, you know, trial and error. Uh, yeah. That's why we watch this because, uh, you know, circle hooks. I love circle hooks. Uh, but the thing with circle hooks, you have to be careful not to fill up the gap of the hook because yeah. if you hook your bait too deep, and you fill that gap up, you're not going to get that penetration. You won't get that hook set. Right. So, you know, that's stuff people learn by watching y'all yeah. and watching other YouTube channels. And, and that's uh, why I think we missed you know, so many things. Things early on was because we were like just like shoving all this bait all over this hook, you know, and like totally messing the ability to set the hook. So on the Potomac there, what is your basic go-to rig? Uh, your line, your sinkers, uh, do you use the demon dragons or not? You know, how do y'all prefer when you go out there to fish? What is your tactic for attacking those fish? For me, for, for the catfish, uh, I like to use the Carolina rig, um, also because. Just also because right now I don't have a three-way um, swivel, so once I have that, I'll probably do it without the, the 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 weight, you know, like sliding on the on the line. But um, that's what I yeah. use, Carolina rig. Um, try to put a bead here and there, you know, next to my hook, and um, very simple. Stays at the bottom. Uh, I did buy uh, some of those floaters, the the demon uh, dragon spooks, the spooks, and yeah. um, I tried it on a couple of my rods. I don't feel like I'm getting more. So so far, um, I'm sticking with the Car Carolina rig, but I'm gonna wait after the spawning. Once they're really uh, yeah. hungry, I'll try that again because everybody, I mean, a lot of fishermen here are using the spooks. So it, it, it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah cool. I do a Santa Cooper rig, um, but that's that's more recent as of like a month and maybe like six weeks ago, um, right before the Glizzy Masters. Yep. And it was because I think it was Chunky who said something about like, I, I, I think the reason it wasn't working for me for such a long time was because I had my spook kind of halfway between the um, the weight and the hook. And really, you need a, a shorter distance from the spook to the hook. And I think that made all yeah. the difference in terms of just elevating it off the um, the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Another thing is... See, Mario Sanchez made it in. Hey, Mario. Uh, think about the yeah, basically, if you were sliding your spook halfway up your leader, 
Uh, yeah. It was floating the bait up, but then the line back behind it was falling down. Exactly. Uh, the thing that I like about the, the Potomac River is um, that I don't know what's the bottom, but we don't get snagged too much, I feel like. I mean, it, when you're in, D, in D.C., I guess, in D.C., yeah. uh, once you go up the river, yeah. uh, then you'll get snagged, you know. But uh, mostly in D.C., it's been pretty nice to us so far. Yeah. I would say that's another thing we learned, though. I right? figured out. Oh, go ahead, David. Yep. I had never used the Santee Cooper rig until about a year ago. A lot of the places I fish are real rocky. Uh, got a lot of trees and debris on the bottom. Uh, so you get snagged up. If you throw out their Carolina rig and you reel it in without a fish on it, uh, you're going to lose yeah. that sinker and that hook. You're yeah. going to snag up. It's just going to happen. Yeah. So I figured out by tying that Santee Cooper rig on there, uh, it keeps that float up off the bottom. And also, uh, it's it gives a little buoyancy to that sinker. Mm. So when you go to reel it in, it picks that sinker up off the bottom quicker. Yeah. So you're actually you're actually riding over the rocks and stuff instead of getting hung in them uh also i noticed the uh drifting weights the santee drifters uh, i get mine from jimmy smith uh fishing and gear uh he makes them and uh it also helps get over them mm -hmm. obstacles and stuff and you don't snag up as much yeah i gotta and try that steven you had my, mentioned a three-way swivel Yes. Uh, but they do, if you, if you use a snap swivel or a barrel swivel between your main line and your leader line, they make the clips that you can attach right to your existing barrel swivel right. and tie your sinker off of that. That's what I and, uh, uh, you can all, by doing it that way, it, it's like the dragon weights. Cause a lot of times when you get hung up, it's your sinker, not your hook, especially if you've got a Santee Cooper rig. Yeah. Well, if you make that dropper come off and you use a lighter line than your main line of your uh, rod that you're using, say if you're using a 30-pound main line, you can put a 20-pound or 15-pound shock leader on your sinker. And when you hang up, all you do is break off the sinker. You still right. get your float. You still get your hook and all that back and they make those clips that will attach uh, directly to your swivel and it does not slide up and down the line it's not like a sinker slide or any of that nice so i like that uh yeah so i figured to... out david i I'm figured out go. with them drifted boats okay Stevan, thanks I for joining us Hey, thank you so much for having me and Bex. Uh, thank you, proud stuff. Looking forward to do that again. I actually really enjoy it. So I was a little shy to uh, yeah. to show up, but uh, it's it's cool. It's really cool. So thank you so much. Well, we enjoy we enjoy seeing you out there so much, Devin. Y'all are so much fun to watch. Uh, yeah. I really look forward to y'all's live streams. Uh, well, we tomorrow, because I know it's going to be a good time. We're gonna try tomorrow, but we have some thunderstorm coming for the next couple of days. So, but we'll 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 try try. we're gonna try. All right. All right. We'll Thank be you looking for you. You have Thank a good you evening. Bye, Stevie. Stevie. Bye. Steven is awesome. I have so much fun with him. Uh, he is a blast, and like I say, it is so much fun to watch y'all. Yeah. Uh, it's very entertaining. Uh, it's also really nice for me because, you know, like, um, uh, it's a bit nerve wracking sometimes being a woman going out there, you know, late night stuff, late night fishing, all that jazz. Um, and I couldn't ask for a better like fishing partner who um, not only like, like we're learning together. It doesn't feel like I'm a burden. It feels like we're a team working together. Um, he's just a stand up guy. Yep. Uh, another thing with that Santee rig, a lot of the times that it really helps, we use it down here. If the creeks are running, you've got mm -hmm. that running water, you've got that moving current. If there's a lot of debris, leaves and stuff, uh, 
it floats that bait up off the bottom and keeps it from getting covered up. Uh, if you throw that Carolina rig out there on the bottom, it gets covered up. Also, if you ever use live bait, uh, a Santee rig works really well because if you throw it on a Carolina rig and you throw it out there on bottom, that bait fish's natural instinct is to find a place to hide. Yeah. He's going to go down to the bottom. Well, with that Santee rig, you've got him floated up and he stays more active because he don't just swim to the bottom and sit there. Uh, you kind of take his hidey holes away from him. 100%. So. Let's see. All right, Ernie Brown. Uh, Night, have Ernie. a good evening. Patriot James, Patriot Catfishers of America. Welcome, Patriot. Hey. I love seeing all these guys in here. Uh, for someone that's starting out, Bex, and they're just getting into fishing for catfish like you and Bex, uh, you and Steven did. Uh, what is the best advice you could probably give someone like that? Um, I mean, the, the first thing I would say is watch YouTube because there is a wealth of resource on this platform um, of people. And it's, you know, one of the things people say, should I do YouTube or should I not do YouTube? It's called YouTube, not them tube. So if you want to share something, yeah. even if you're not like we've been doing this for a year, you know, of learning how to fish, we're not necessarily the best at it, but I want to share my joy and passion um, and just watch YouTube. Sometimes it doesn't have to be explainers. It could be a live stream like Chung. I learned a lot about my rigs from watching Chunky Cats fishing, um, what he was looking for, how he was casting all that stuff. So that'd be the first thing. Um, and the second thing would be don't overthink gear. Um Think about like rigs and stuff like that, but don't overthink the gear that you have. Don't try and buy the most expensive rod and reel out the gate. You can catch fish on something you bought at Walmart. Um, yep. Get out there and learn because inevitably you're going to buy something expensive that you, it's not, it's not for you. Yep. Well, and that's a good point. If you're just getting into it, you always hear people say, what's a good choice for a beginner? Uh, the ugly stick rods are very yeah. reasonably priced. Uh, they are exceptional rods. Uh, you can handle big fish on them. Yep. Uh, do not be afraid to start out with one of those. And then if you decide you like it and you want to invest in the more expensive gear, that's when you do it. But yep. don't go spend, you know, thousands of dollars on brand new rods and reels and then figure out you don't like it because yep. you're going to end up selling it and you're not going to get what you paid for it 100%. and you're going to lose a lot of money like that and you can buy uh, some of these entry level like and also I, oh go ahead i also tell people to match the rod to the type of fish you're fishing for yeah do not go out there with an extra heavy uh fishing rod if you're catching two and three pound catfish you're yeah, not going to enjoy it it's going to be yeah it's, it's going to be like a broomstick you're just going to reel them in there's not going to be any fight so match your rod to whatever size fish you're going to catch and you know that's how you have the fun because if you think catching two to eight pound fish is not fun if you get one of them medium rods or a yeah. medium light rod and go out there, uh, that that five pound fish will feel like twenty. You will have a blast. One hundred percent. I have a, a bag in my car that is just a panfish bag, and it has like little jigs and tubes and you know curly tail grubs and stuff like that. And then I have an ultralight casking yeah. uh, rod and And like if I am just feeling like I know it sounds silly, I'm feeling down, stressed whatever it is, and I just need to feel the joy of fishing, I will just find a creek and take that little rod out. And those little fish feel just as fun if you match the gear up for them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, bluegill. You can right. go out there catching bluegill or skipjack, catching your bait on ultralight gear, and it's a blast. Yep. Uh, 
I was going to say, I see Laura, but, uh, um, she says she used know, the, the catfish ugly stick. I have that same one and we still have it out there. I just changed the reel on it. Um, so I used the reel it came with while I was still learning and as it kind of conked out on me, because it isn't the greatest reel. It's I find when you get a combo, that's usually the first thing um, to change. Yeah. <laughs> the rods are usually pretty solid. Yep. I, I've changed the reels on mine. But I still have my medium action ugly stick rods that are almost as old as my children. Mm. Uh, my kids are all grown. I've had some of them probably close. I'd say at least 17, 18 years. And uh, man, they still work great. Uh, I did change the reels on them. Yeah. Uh, I put the Abu Garcia 6500 on them. Uh, Hey, Rex Blocker, welcome. Uh, hey, how you I doing? definitely want to upgrade my rod. That's something mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Most of my rods I have had for years and years and years. Uh, I'm kind of old fashioned and I don't like change. If I find something and I know mm -hmm. that works, uh, I kind of stick with it, yeah. uh, especially with my fishing gear because. I do not want to lose that fish of a lifetime because of equipment failure. Right. But it's time that I'm going to have to actually upgrade and get new rods and, uh, you know, learn it all over again with new rods and stuff. But uh, there, there are so many great rods out there now. Uh, yeah. Used to, you know, back even 10 years ago, we did not have catfish specific rods right uh now everybody and their dog is making catfish specific rods reels uh yeah. the hooks uh it, it's come a long long way and it really uh, has you know it it just shows how much uh the uh catfishing is growing oh, nice. world record catfish caught on a okay. yeah rex I saw a big one caught on a dock it, demon on two stands. <laughs> yes. 60.4 pounds. Yeah. Uh, it broke the rod. It broke the rod, and they reeled it in with just the reel. Yeah. But, man, could you imagine? I don't think they even knew how big it was, Bex, until they got it up to the top. I mean, how could you When tell? they seen it, they were like, <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, once it broke that rod, he had nothing to play that fish with. Right. I mean, he basically just had to wear the fish out. And, you know, he's got a little four inch butt of the rod and the reel, <laughs> you know. Uh, We're not really great. I can't that. believe they Go landed over. it. Yeah, I can't believe they landed it. That was that was one of them things where everything just lined up and it yeah. was meant to be. Uh that that's all you can say about that. If it had been my luck when that rod broke, it would have cut the line. End of story. The fish would have swam off, and right. it'd have been all over. But the crying, you know. Right. Yeah, we have a joke that like so. Stephen typically you know, always catches the bigger fish, but I'll always catch a new species first. That's the thing that happens for us. Yeah. Well, you know, my, and my catfish. Sometimes it works like that. Yeah, my catfish PB is like 12 pounds, you know. Um, I do not have a big catfish number yet. I mean, I know it will happen, but I still have a lot of fun. I still catch a lot of fish, and I can still win tournaments. So I feel like yeah. if you're nervous, get out there, please. You will It will change your life. Don't focus so much on the size of the fish. Uh, go out there and, you know, have fun. Catch what you can. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people put too much stress on themselves, yeah. uh, but just go out there and enjoy yourself. The big fish, if you're putting time in on the water yeah. and you're fishing an area that has big fish, and that Potomac River does has big fish. It's a monster. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah, it's just a matter of time before you hook into one of them big ones, Yeah, and uh, it will happen. So, you know, I try not to focus on that. That's like now. Uh, the spawn is coming down post spawn. Uh, 
the the females and stuff will be off the bed. They'll start feeding back up, and they're going to scatter out. Yeah. And uh, you can still catch big fish, but you will not catch the numbers of big fish uh, like before the spawn when they were feeding up, getting ready to go, and hitting the shallow waters. Yeah. So kind of be realistic in what you're, in what you're going for. Uh, yeah. Don't go out there and expect to catch 40 pound fish every day. Uh, yeah. Not everyone lives on the Tennessee River. Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna go out and catch 40 pounders all day long. It's not plausible. Uh, so be realistic. Don't self set yourself up for uh, failure. Keep realistic goals and yeah. just go out there and have fun. Enjoy yourself. 100. Uh, percent I think uh, you know, Papa that, P has a. That's a why we all fish. Yeah. Papa Z has a great point about like just checking your rods for dings and scrapes and stuff like that. Like I was guilty of that in the beginning when I was learning how to catfish. I had the same like line on there forever. And like now I'm constantly, I will run my, my fingers down the line just to check for abrasion or has a knot slipped a little bit, you know. I don't trust old knots. Yeah. Uh, when I go out there, if I know I have not retied that knot in a while, I will cut it loose and retie everything before I ever throw it out. And yeah. every single trip, I don't care if I just fished yesterday. When I go back out there and I go to fish again, I double check the drag on every single one of my rods before yeah. they ever hit the water. Uh, I'd be interested to deal with other ideas. I'd be interested to know if other people do this. Sorry, I think there's a bit of lag. I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, but I sharpen my hooks. And I'd be interested to know if other people sharpen their hooks. Um, like, I am constantly doing that. I used to, but anymore. Uh, I've got so many hooks, I keep them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't buy hooks in small quantities. Uh, my wife fishes with me, and if there is anything out there to get snagged up on, uh, she will find it. So I keep lots of extra hooks, mm -hmm. and if I ever think that hook is getting dull, uh, I will tra it, trade it out for a new hook. I will switch the hook. Uh, hey, Cat Chasers, welcome. You know, a lot of people use smaller tackle than I do. Uh, an eight odd hook is the smallest hook I fish with, oh, cool. and uh -huh. I catch two pound. I catch two pound fish on them eight odd hooks all day long. Yeah. Uh, I've even caught you know three and four pounders on ten and twelve odd hooks. Uh, That's crazy. Uh oh, cat chasers! Oh no, <laughs> cat chasers! You gotta be you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> I've only had a, got a I mean, I, I, hook, today. I hook myself almost every time I go out fishing, not like past the bar, but I'm, I'm spiking myself all the time. The worst one I had was a treble hook in my, my calf that went into the muscle. But other than that, <laughs> it's just been, I ding myself yeah. all the time. You get used to it. My kids were little. My daughter was probably 10, 11 years old. And uh, my son was about eight. And she went to set the hook and jerked that hook so hard, it come back and it hooked her right down to her eyebrow. Wow. And uh, she was like, no big deal. But her little brother seen that hook go through her eyeball. <laughs> and uh, he freaked out. He was running around. And she's like, it's okay. And she just pulls the hook out. And wow. He about passed out. It was funny <laughs> to watch because she's the one that actually got stuck with the hook. But you would have thought it was him suffering. And, right, uh, right. It, it was fun to watch. Uh, these new hooks, though, they're really, really sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Lou, I started buying my circle hooks from Uncle Lou's, and, uh, man, his circle hooks are so sharp, and I love them because they've got an extra wide gap. Yeah. And it, I fish with a lot of light bait, and I fish with big chunks of bait. So that allows me to put the big baits on there, without closing up the gap of that circle hook. Yeah. And uh, you, don't, you don't miss the fish. That Those are the next hooks I'm going to have to get. Um, I actually 
just got the Uncle Lou's rod, so it's on its way to me. Um, medium heavy. I got a spinning rod. I still jump between spinning. I'm still learning the bait casting. I, I bait cast for bass all the time, but that bigger bait caster is a different beast. Um, yeah. But I use uh, Gamakatsu. Seven aught to like nine aught is like my world right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you try them Uncle Lou's hooks, you will love them. I've heard uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried. Yeah, I've used I've used the team catfish. I've used the catfish sumo. I've used gamagatsu. Uh, matter of fact, in my tackle box, I've still got all of these hooks. I still got some of them in there, and uh, I got them Uncle Lou's hooks. And boy, I fell in love with them. And uh, yeah. uh, first time I put one on, I was fishing with bluegill, and uh, I got into a bunch of gar. And I was actually able to hook these four and five foot gar with the wow. pinout circle hook. It was literally hooking them, and uh, I was bringing them into the bank. So I that's was really crazy. impressed with those hooks. And, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, they are super, 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 super sharp. Uh, really great hooks. Uh, everything I've got from Uncle Lou so far has uh, been top quality to spot on uh i really like i really like having people in our catfish community that we can buy stuff from they come yeah. in and they support us and it gives us a chance to support them like uh brad caudell uh he makes all the sinkers and stuff yeah so if you need sinkers i go through him uh uncle lou with the rattles and the beads and uh the peg floats uh uh the demon dragon style spooks uh any of that i can go through uncle lou and get and uh he's got swivels and uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that i love i love being able to keep it right there in our community yeah. and uh money river uncle lou's planer boards i don't know if uncle lou's planer boards are just phenomenal they are beautiful to look at uh they went over with the boom. I remember when he first showed one of them and uh, he gave out the price on them and everyone just went nuts. Mm. Uh, those, those planer boards are nice. Yeah. Yeah, they look really nice. I have no idea the first thing to do with a planter board, but I've seen people doing stuff with them, but that's a, that's a future lesson. Cat Chaser says his wife is still laughing. <laughs> yeah, that would be mine. Mine would have been over there trying to take pictures of it before I got it out. She's like, you know this is going on YouTube. She'd have been clicking <laughs> away. Uh, is there anyone in chat that has any questions for Bex? Or uh, Bex, is there anything you would like to share Uh with the people in chat um i mean one thing i just want to say is like thank you so much for like being part of our experience you know like um i genuinely look forward to chatting with you all on thursdays when we go live i love jumping into chats at different live streams and chatting with you all like i feel like i many of you i've never met some of you i may never meet in person um, but I feel like I'm part of this community. So. Yep. There's a uh, uncle Lou's. He made it in. I will catfish regulators. <laughs> um, do you have to messenger or mail Brad, uh, for information? Yes. Uncle Willie's two cents. Uh, Brad is strictly on Facebook. Uh, Uncle Lou uh, is also. Uh, so those guys, you definitely have to check them on uh, Facebook. But that's how you contact them. And uh, great guys, great products. Uh, I see Uncle Lou made it in here. Uh, Aaron with Catfish Regulators. Yeah. And uh, I see them. Um I can't thank you and seven enough. Yeah, I just see the cat chasers asked what got um, me into fishing and have I always fished? Um, so I can answer that real quick. 
Um, I, um, so I grew up, I'm, I'm from originally from the United Kingdom, but I moved to Florida when I was 13. And so I did a little bit of pier fishing and stuff like that. Nothing like kind of the stuff your parents are like, let's do something this weekend. Right. And we went fishing um, and they didn't know what they were doing and I didn't know what I was doing. So if we caught a fish, cool. Um, but right. My nephew, so my two nephews live with me. They're nine and 10 years old. Um, and one of them, the 10 year old had just been begging me like, or like wanting to learn how to fish. Right. So I was like, all right, it's quarantine. Like we're stuck here. Let's, let's do this. Right. And I literally spent like a month yeah. trying to get this kid on a bluegill. Like I could not catch one for that. You know, and I started watching YouTube to figure out how to do it. And, um, I remember the day that we were yeah. out there, we had been fishing forever with worms. We were getting taps and hits, but we didn't have the right hooks, you know? And, um, I finally got a bluegill on the hook and that, that was his, it was history after that, like that, that first fish after a yeah. month of trying uh, from then on, I was, you know, buying new rigs, learning more, like all this stuff. So for me, it was just, you know, I know a lot of people have experienced hard times during the COVID pandemic and stuff like that. But for me, um, it, fishing has changed my life. <laughs> Yeah. LG Bass says, come on. <laughs> I will. I will. Hey, Wild Turkey and Jay Fox Hunter. Uh, fishing is a great sport. Uh, people of all ages get into it. Yep. And it kind of it kind of helps uh, bridge that generational gap. And uh, regardless of your age, uh, yeah. You can go out there and fish and have a good time. And yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, that's how it all started. You talk about taking them out and trying to get them on a bluegill. That's how most of us started. You know, yeah. just like Stebbin was saying, a, a cork, a worm, a rod. Uh, some of us started with cane poles, uh, you know. It's that excitement that ignited that passion in us. Yeah. And uh, my granddaughters, uh, I take them out. And my oldest granddaughter, she loves to fish. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed enough to be able to introduce her to that and uh, watch her get into it. And yeah. uh, good Lord willing, I'm, I'm going to be able to watch her grow older and uh, progress and yeah. learn different fishing techniques and styles and you know uh some people were lucky enough they had someone there to teach them uh my mother was a single mother uh and uh basically everything i learned about fishing uh either my uncle took me or i just went out on my own and learned yeah uh, all my hunting all my fishing i basically learned from trial and error and it's stuff I had to figure out. So if you get the opportunity to take a another person, uh, regardless of age, out and introduce them into the outdoors and the sport of fishing, I highly recommend it. And uh, mm -hmm. tell you what, we'll get a kid hooked is jugging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They I mean, can go I mean and they can swim and they can play around. Yeah, drive think, back by and pick the jugs up. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, for you know, it also just teaches you a lot of good life lessons, right? And I don't just mean that for kids, right? Like it's great to kid teach kids patience, person. Like that's one of the things we always say, me and my nephew, when we're fishing, patience, perseverance, right? But I need to remember those life skills too, you know, like as an as a adult who's like traveling the world like i need to remember patience and perseverance you know um and find the joy in the little things live in the moment all that stuff that i think fishing really helps yep. you do yep you know and the main thing when you take young ones out uh to go fishing don't make it all serious keep yeah. it fun for them don't take the fun out of, out of it for them uh hey ram diaz uh bottom feeders hooked up uh he said they're having a hard time catching fish. Yeah, and a lot weird. of it's the spawns go. Uh, the spawn is always tough. You've got to know uh, 
You've got to know that. And certain times of the year when that spawn is going on, the bite is going to be tough. It does not matter. I hear a lot of people say, uh, well, the fish are spawning. I'm not going to fish until the spawn's over. Guys, I do not recommend that. If you do not fish during the spawn, you're never going to figure them out. Yeah. You can still catch fish during the spawn. You may, you're not going to catch the big fish. You're not going to catch the numbers of fish, but you can still catch fish. Yep. If you do not put in the time and put in the effort to learn where the fish are at in the spawn, uh, what they're feeding on during the spawn, do they want the smaller baits, do they want the large baits, what does it take? What yeah. areas are they are they in? Uh, if you do not put in the time to figure that out, you're going to struggle with the spawn every single year. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's still a struggle. It's still frustrating to go out and, you know, you know that the spawn's on, but you can still catch fish. Uh, guys, yeah. if you can go out and you catch, if you catch five fish in a day, that's five more than you were going to catch sitting at the house on the couch. 100%. Uh, and it's never you know, a bad day to be by the water. <laughs> like, just get out there. I see LG Bass yeah. and, and Cat Chasers talking about transitioning from bass to catfishing. And um, it, it is, it's, it's very different. And like, well, obviously there's one of like, you're putting the pole out there and waiting, right? And with bass fishing, you're doing a lot of casting. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I found really fun now about catfishing and bass fishing, um, especially because I love a good smallie, is like, I can take a couple of catfish rods out me and a little bit of bait, step them up and I could be throwing out casting on the river, trying to get myself a small A or something like that. So for me, it's just kind of opened yep. um, the experience up a little bit. Yeah. My, my oldest granddaughter, she's only three. Uh, she'll be four this year. Uh, she would make an excellent bass fisherman because mm -hmm. she likes to cast and reel in cast and reel in. And it's cute because uh, she goes out there, and I don't know where she got it from, but she calls her cork, her bobber, she calls it a cupcake. And uh, <laughs> she was out there, and uh, her dad doesn't fish that much. He's from California, and I'm teaching the grandkids and them, and she's out there explaining to her dad. He, she's like, you push this button, and that makes the cupcake go out. And, you know, <laughs> you sit and listen to stuff like that. It, it's a blast. It's, That's awesome. Uh, I love it. I love it. Regulators is giving LG a hard time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did catch that bass. Yeah. Yeah, and if he hooks one, if he hooks one and it gets off, uh, Aaron catfish regulators will let him know about it. <laughs> no. If you ever watch them fish together, it's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they've been on that dock. Uh, I love that stand dock. From two stands fishing has been out here on that dock. Man, it is nice with them pole holders built into it already. It and, uh, and it kind of looks like a, a like a desktop background. You know what I mean? Like you're looking at that dock in the water and it looks like yeah. a, it looks like your computer background. Well, in like uh, the uh, Iron Cat tournament, uh, Aaron kept telling them, I left Pinky up at LG's house, go get Pinky and throw it out, throw it out, throw it out. And it took them a while to go get Pinky, but that sure enough, they threw it out there and they were catching fish on it. And okay. I don't know what it is about that pink rod is pinky, but it is a lucky rod. And a lucky rod. Yeah. That happens to me all the time though. There's like, like I have two ugly stick tiger rods. Um, yeah. And two muddy river rods that I'm using right now. Right. And like every time the blue cat will get hit, <laughs> like there's all these other rods. What's going on here? Papa T my bass fishing into the day. I accidentally hooked the biggest channel I've seen. Yeah. yeah my, my first channel catfish was an accidental um, caught, uh, catch when I was bass fishing, and it, it blew my mind. Yeah. 
Aaron, he's caught a 61 pounder off that dock. Wow. Uh, I kind of, I kind of felt bad today. Me and the wife went out and, uh, we were catching, trying to catch uh bluegill and stuff for bait. And, uh, we caught some bluegill and caught some, uh, bullheads for flathead bait and stuff. And she had caught a little bitty tiny, uh, bluegill. I mm. mean, that thing wasn't that big. And, uh, she told me, don't throw it back where I'm fishing at. Throw it over to the side. And I walked over there and I tucked that little fish and I throwed it in that water. And it no sooner hit that water than this bass come out of nowhere and devoured that bluegill, killed it. I mean, he swallowed it. And uh, I kind of felt bad because I basically assassinated that fish. Uh, that bass tore that bluegill up. And I was like, well, a lot of good it did for me to release it so it could grow. That bass just ate right. it. It's still she kind of laughed thing. at me and made fun of me. Yeah. It, yeah, still, it didn't matter what I did. It was just destined to die, I guess. And it didn't hit that water two seconds. And I seen that bluegill go like this and go like that. And there was a tree stump there. And the yeah. only thing I can figure is that bass was laying under that stump. And he come out and just exploded on that bluegill. And uh, we're talking, it's not five, six inches deep of water. Uh, yeah. Almost, you know, scared the crap out of me. That's and, the uh, other thing I think I've learned. It about was fishing. definitely a learning like, experience. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the other thing I've learned about fishing is like, obviously there's too shallow. But like, if you think it's too shallow, it's likely not too shallow. There's, there's probably fish holding there. Yeah. Stan. Hey, Stan. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, you just never know with fishing. You've got to be willing to try different things and you got to experiment. You know, uh, no. I don't know about you, but when I go fishing, I don't just take all my rods and launch them in the same place. I want to mm -hmm. hit different water levels uh, in different areas. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's times they may be holding close to the rocks and there's times they may be up against the wood. Uh, you know, I kind of experiment and throw them out. And yeah. if I start catching two or three all on one rod, then that tells me, hey, there's a pattern here. Yeah. This is the bait they want or this is the depth of water they're in. You know, uh, fishing from the bank, you don't always have the benefit of a fish finder. You kind of right. have to use your brain as your fish finder and process that data. And, uh, you know, you can be very successful from the bank. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I think, and I also think it's incredibly rewarding when you figure it out from the bank. Right. And I'm, I'm sure it is rewarding from a boat too, but you have limited choices of where you can pitch up and cast your rod. So you really have to put some thinking into it. Yep. Yep. Um, and when it works out, it's epic. And Yep, you're doing it without all the electronics, uh, you know, just off of learning and what you have, the knowledge you have in your mind. And, yeah. uh, you know, when all the pieces come together, uh, it's very exciting, you know. Lee Evans, Catfish in Kentucky. Hey, Lee Evans. <laughs> I don't you uh, know how to fish. <laughs> that's one for you. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, you know how to fish Lee Evans. Definitely knows how to catch the turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I kind of felt I kind of felt sorry for him. It didn't matter what they did, it was a turtle. And uh I have yet to catch a turtle and I'm dreading that day. Especially a snapping turtle. Stan, I love you. Yeah. Uh, Roger had that kids tournament yeah. and Gabby, uh, did you watch them turtles? I Gabby watched it and I watched her out? like basically handling those snapping turtles. And I was like, I, wow, she's fierce. 25 pound snapping turtle. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, she reeled it in like it was no big deal. And then she's like, well, I got it on the bank, dad. It's yours. My job is done. And <laughs> you know, she just went on about her business, and, uh. you know. Yeah, I love snapping turtle. I'm, I'm cutting the line. I'm not. I'm not messing. Those things That's are exactly terrifying. what he said. Just cut the line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
he got that turtle. Uh, Justin had that turtle in that net, and then uh, they had to figure out how to get it back out of the net yeah. into the water without getting bit. And uh, I love that kids tournament, uh, two day event, and uh, man, it was a lot of a lot of fun watching them young kids out there catching fish, and uh, it's it's great entertainment. It really is. Yeah, and I love um, uh, Chunky's son, Cookie, is just fantastic. Like, watching yeah. him, I'll tell you, there was, a, like, Stan um, on, on Stan Day, Father's Day, and, and Chunky, like, with Cookie. Yeah. Like, that, that was beautiful for me. Like, I just felt like I was getting to experience a memory of a lifetime, you know? Yeah. Well, what was so great with the Cookie and Chunky – it had been such a long time since Cookie has fished with Chunky. Yeah. And he got out there, and it kind of rekindled that passion for Cookie. Yeah. And now Cookie's out there uh, fishing with him a lot more. Uh, he did the tournament. Yeah. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Mason is with Chunky right now. Yeah. Uh, Chunky said Chunky that Mason was going to go with him tonight and uh, go fishing and, uh, uh, you know, I love watching that, and uh, Mason gets so excited, and uh, you know, it, it's a blast to watch. Yeah. You know, just like Steven, you know, Steven has so much energy, and he's so, so excited, and you, you, you cannot be in a bad mood around him, you know. Ever. When you're out there, and you, yeah, you're watching him fish and stuff. That positive energy and stuff, it just rubs off on you. Yeah. And uh, if you're in a, in a bad, bad place, mood. go I watch. I'm in a bad mood, like parking the car yep. and like Steven rolls up and he's like, what up? You know, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Oh, man. He's Cat Chaser says Mason with wisdom tonight, but storms moved in. So they're packing up. Got it. Yeah, I can actually. That's the problem we got. <coughs> That's the problems we got. I went and got bait, and I was going to do the show live from the lake tonight mm. and uh, actually be fishing. But uh, we let the storms move out, and I'm going to go out first thing in the morning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really wanting to get on. Uh, really wanting to get on a big flathead, and right now you have a better chance of catching that flathead at night. And I've got prime flathead bait with the bluegill and yeah. the bullhead. And uh, I we've had so much rain. It rained for almost two and a half months straight. Wow. Then it's been raining off and on. And this is the third or fourth day we've had rain. And uh, we've got flooding and stuff again. The yeah. small little creek that we normally go to to catch our bluegill. Uh, that water looks like the white uh, water rapids. It's just boiling down through there, blowing up around them bridges and stuff. And uh, we went out there and we tried to uh, see if there was any perch fighting that current. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were catching channel cat and uh, bullheads and stuff like that. But that water is moving. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the problems I run into down here fishing, fishing from the bank is uh it's all red clay so when it rains it is a muddy so, nightmare down here yeah uh the roads around our lakes and stuff are not asphalt so there's very few places you can get to to fish so i'm, I'm gonna go fishing tomorrow and i know i'm not gonna be able to fish the places i want to fish but i'm gonna go and fish the place i can fish and just make the best of it wow yeah yeah. Um, I flathead is one that I've not caught yet, so that's I'm gonna try this summer. I know what to do. I just gotta find them. Oh wow, LG bass. That's oh crazy. wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, Uncle Willie Two Cents says he thinks he'd rather have high water than the low water they're having now. 
it it depends on where because sometimes low water can make it easier from the bank to to kind of figure out where the fish are going to be holding up you know so sometimes low water can be helpful yep so I like no down try. here the only thing about the high water uh a lot of times when our water gets high and you get that flooding water like we got now it pushes that water up into the green grass and stuff on the banks and stuff. And those fish will come up in there and they'll feed heavy. Yeah. Uh, they're eating them insects and worms and stuff that are down in that grass and stuff. And it can be great fishing. Yeah. Hello, SF Outdoors. Welcome. Well, depending on your river. And so I work for a conservation organization. So this is how I learned this. But like when a, when a river floods and depending on like the sediments and stuff like that, what it's made up of, it, that whole main river area can get really deoxygenated. So not only are they moving into the flooded yep. areas for food, but they're moving in because it's much more oxygenated, a much more healthy place to be. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Cash 22. Uh, that's the thing down here. Uh, anytime you got that fresh water coming in, uh, it creates that current in creeks and rivers and lakes yeah. that normally have no current. And that fresh incoming water, uh, not only is it bringing all that bait and stuff out of them creeks and stuff, uh, washing it into that reservoir and stuff, but fish will travel yeah. for miles up that creek channel to get to that fresh water coming in because yeah, they know, I mean, Basically, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. All they got to do is get there, and it, it's going to bring all them crawdads and bugs and everything else. Yeah. They just sit there and uh, eat away. Hey, Redneck Boys. Hey, Redneck Boys. I see Stan saying that y'all will see no real loss and two stands fishing together probably before fall. I, I don't doubt that at all. I think that will happen. Yeah. Uh, Stan and them are great. I love great. watching him, and you know, him and Stan three, and uh, they split up. One may be on the bank, one will be in the boat or the kayak, and they go out with Dan Green Machine a lot. And you know, Stan, he's been over there with LG Bass and them, yeah, and uh, fishing. Hey, Kelly, Kelly B in the house, the Bullock Experience. Hey, hey. Uh, it's great to see all these people get to fish with each other. Uh, you know, Palmetto, he come up there and fished with Haz and everybody. Yeah. And uh, that was great to watch. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that there's so many people that fish that D.C. area. And uh, they all get together. And when you mm -hmm. see everyone come together, uh, it, it's great to see, like, I think it was Memorial Day. Has and Mark and all of them uh, got yep. together and a chunky and his wife and they all set up and were cooking out and uh, you know to know that that love is there between people and they're not just friends on YouTube they're friends off of YouTube yeah uh, Uncle Lou Bex I bet your pink rod will be be there tomorrow my pink rod up <laughs> to if, if it's bright I'll take it. <laughs> Uncle Lou, those yeah, were amazing. Brian B, he's like, we had a ball that day. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you see Stan fishing with a lot of them. Austin come out and helped them. Yeah. Uh, uh, One Ton Fishing Club. Uh, we have a great community to where you can reach out and uh, get with some of these guys and go fishing with them and that's my goal. I want to be able, I want to be able to travel around and uh, fish with other people. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to go to the catfish just, conference? I definitely want to. If there's any way possible to make it happen, I want to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, I love the virtual cat con we had, but I still that's still something I want to experience in person. Yeah. Uh, another thing I would love to do is. 
make that trip to Mendota mm -hmm. uh, and catch them giant channel cats. Uh, yeah. I'd like to go fish uh, Kerr uh, with the uh, Art One Ton Fishing Club and them. Uh, I'd love to come up and fish the Potomac and the James. Yeah. Uh, I don't get I don't get to fish a lot of the big rivers. Uh, we don't have the tidal river here, so that's a whole different game. And uh, you know, I was lucky enough to fish uh, Wheeler on the Tennessee River mm -hmm. chain. And uh, man, it was a blast. Yeah. Let's see this one from you won't get the neighbor attitude in any other fishing community. That's exactly right. Cat chasers. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I think that this is there's strong. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying hi to Sean, Catfish oh, Heroes. Sean. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, like, I have not, nor, minus some of the folks in the UK with their fishing community and they fish different species, they, they definitely have camaraderie there. Um, and if you guys haven't checked out some of those UK channels, I highly recommend it because they, one, you learn things, that you, as uh, David would say, you can bring it back, but... Um, it's just it's just fun to watch them do their thing, um, but you know, bass community. I have not found the kind of camaraderie that I've found in this. Even snakehead community, no. it's very uh, you know, it, catfish community is where it's at. Everyone's willing to help each other. Yeah, and uh, that's basically that's basically what. I started my channel for it. it was for the educational aspect. Uh, my goal when I set out was to help get people on more fish and bigger fish to help yeah. them gain the confidence and become better anglers. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is not this, this is not just for entertainment. I want you to be able to learn from it and. Uh, KY Crazy Crappie Cat Angler, welcome. Love it. Uh, what gave me what gave me pleasure when I started this, and uh, Fins and Fowl, Brent, uh, he's a YouTuber in our catfish community. He was able to go to the same places on the same bodies of water that I fish and catch fish. Yeah. So you know that that made me feel good because you know he's coming down there going to the exact same thing. He already knows what to do, uh, what the fish are doing. And, uh, you know, that helps him put fish in the boat. And to me, that is a great success. Yeah. Uh, I love no being able feeling. to help each other. Just like you, you know, we were talking earlier for those that missed it, uh, giving that rod to that young girl. Yeah. Uh, watching her catch first fish on that rod and stuff uh that will be a moment that you'll never ever forget yeah, uh, and that young it. girl yep that young girl that's a moment in her life she will never forget you know years down the road when someone asked her you know how did you get into fishing she's gonna like you know what there was this lady named bex yeah. and uh, she she's got she's got a story to tell yeah and, and uh, her mom you know, texted me later. Does, like, we exchanged, oh, sorry. I was going to say, we exchanged numbers, me and her mom. And, like, she said that, like, and this is, like, just, like, I'm getting, like, goosebumps just saying it. But she said that her daughter doesn't open up to people because of her autism. Like, it can yeah. be difficult. And she said that the fishing experience brought her out of her shell, you know? Um, yeah. And, that, and for that, me, it was just, so amazing. Yeah, and I just got to fish with people. Like for me, it was just like I'm fishing here, and you're trying to learn. Let's fish together, you know. But to yeah. get that reward out of it, it was just amazing. Yeah. If if that does not touch your heart, to see that and be a part of that, you're yeah. not alive. Uh, you are well, not no. living. Agreed. All right, Lee Evans, good night. Yeah, I know it's getting late. I've kept Bex oh, on wow. here. 
uh, gabbing away. I love to talk fishing. I kind of get carried away. Uh, but I will, I will get off of here and let Bex get some rest. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming into chat. If you have not checked out No Real Loss, uh, the link was in chat. It was posted out there. Uh, definitely go watch that. Uh, it's great entertainment. Uh, you will not regret it. Uh, it's good to, like I say, it's good to see Stebbin back. And, uh, man, I, I can't tell y'all how much it means to have each and every one of y'all here and uh, to show your support. And, uh, you know, in return, uh, support those that you see and uh, check them out. Uh, you will definitely love watching it. Uh Guys, it's free to subscribe and check out their channel. If you decide you don't like it, you can always take it back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 costs, it costs you nothing. Yeah, come have fun with us, you know. And uh, if you don't like it, that's cool. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Stan, for putting the link back out there again. Uh like I say, guys, if you go watch it, you will enjoy it. Uh, I appreciate it. It's you great that. fishing. It's great entertainment. And uh, you feel like you're there. You feel like you're out there. You're not watching people fish. You're out there fishing with friends. And, uh, you know, it puts a smile on your face. And we have so much going on in this world right now. There's so much negativity uh, anytime you can get a break and go somewhere positive like that, it's well worth it. Let me, I'm going to, Cat Chasers just so. asked how many hats. I'm going to show you my hat wall real quick. How many hats do you have? Yeah. yeah, not all of them are hung up right now, but I don't know if you can see some of them right there. <laughs> I got a lot. Yep. That was them. Yeah. Uh, well, Bex, I can't thank you enough and be sure to let Stebbin know uh, how much I appreciate y'all coming on. It was mm -hmm. great talking to y'all and uh, maybe the storms will go away and y'all will get to go out tomorrow. Uh, I will be looking for y'all. Uh, so hopefully everything works out well. Uh, yeah, and we may try if it's rolling storms, we might try somewhere easier, right? Like where we can sit in the car for a little bit and wait it out. Yeah, agree. But I appreciate it. I appreciate all y'all for coming in here. I'm gonna end this and let Miss Bexie uh, <laughs> get some rest. Uh, guys, I will see y'all back here same time next week. Uh, I'm not sure who's going to be the guest yet. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back, uh, but we will have someone on here. And uh, as always, we'll share the knowledge. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, invite all y'all back to come in and ask questions. Love y'all guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for having me.